Well, Mike and I are here in Israel, in Ramat Gan, first of all. Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah, so I'm here with the, well, what was once the KMC Lions is now the MLS Lions. But we're here visiting friends, um, which has quickly in the week that we've been here in Israel uh, become family. Um, we've got a relationship with Felix, who runs the swim club here. And it's kind of a long time in the making, wanting to come out and visit the Holy Land. Uh, my parents traveled here many, many years ago when they first got married. And I've always heard incredible things about the culture and the people. Um, but it took me a while to get out of here. But now that we're here, it's, it's been an amazing time. I mean, you, you are here for almost a week, so mm -hmm. just let us know where you've been yeah. so far. Yeah, so the biggest and most exciting for me was we got to go to the Dead Sea yesterday. Um, so swimming in the Dead Sea or floating in the Dead Sea <laughs> was pretty incredible. And the mud bath. Um, and then we did the Tel Aviv beach. We hung around there, uh, obviously drove past Jericho. So it's a lot of biblical um, things for us. So we went through to... Um, uh, what was the, what was the old city? Um, Jaffa? Uh, no, we did Jaffa on the very yeah. first night. We ate in the old city in Jaffa and then it was Jerusalem. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it was all pretty special for us because it's like being a believer and knowing, you know, Jesus was once here and the stories behind it is pretty incredible and, and getting to learn more about, um, your guys' history and the culture has been pretty wild. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, and you are getting to swim here with those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've seen you like explaining stuff to them, yeah. swimming next to them. I mean, it's probably be pretty special for them, maybe even yeah. for you. Yeah, I love it. I think I've been very, so I'm 24 years old. I'm very fortunate to have been, I've been swimming professionally for a decade now, which is kind of crazy to say, because I still feel like I'm at the beginning of my career. Um, but I recognize that there's things my dad and I have discovered and learned, um, a lot of them the hard way by failing that we can give to these guys so that they can succeed quicker. Um, and I think that's what's really special about even to getting to know Felix and his heart behind having us come and visit is that there's a lot of knowledge that we can impart on these athletes, which is really easy to do, but then it gives them the opportunity to implement it. And that's all that matters. You know, when an athlete knows better, it's up to them to now follow through and to put it into action and then they'll succeed. And uh, I've seen you swimming some breaststroke with uh, Jonathan Itzhaki. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think about him? Yeah, it's amazing. I think anytime I get to train with uh, a champion of another country and just see what they go through and what their s struggles are or their challenges or their successes is pretty cool because I think one, it gives me perspective, but it also motivates me. And I think it, it encourages me to continue working hard and to realize that we are we're very blessed with the opportunities that we're given as athletes um and i train alone i'm an individual athlete in an individual sport but you know i I've, i've been swimming with no teammates for eight years now and um it's different so whenever i get to get in the pool with another exceptional athlete is it's fun because it pushes me yeah and i mean i've seen you working hard <laughs> but i think last year was quite rough for mm -hmm. you I mean yeah not making it to to words um, yeah what, how did you feel that back then? yeah it was it was interesting I think rough's a good way to put it I think there was there were a lot of things I was dealing outside of the pool um, emotionally spiritually that I just like I think it took away from my focus um, which is a good thing to like you know miss the team and recognize now I think had I not gone through that experience I wouldn't have learned from it and I think I went into there maybe a little too confident being like okay I haven't missed a team in seven years like this can't be that hard I'll just swim my staple event and make it in and I ended up missing the team by one one hundredth of a second in that 50 free and and that hurt and I think it was a bit of a like hey what are you what are you doing you can't just like coast and so that was fun like I, I think that's really important I think a lot of athletes will go through that at some point in their career and it wasn't for lack of working hard, but I think it was the intentionality was different. The focus was not as boom. And so we know there's a silver lining in missing that team. And I think it's nice to see that all coming to fruition. And it sets us up nicely for World Cups now. And then obviously the rest of the year going into Paris. But, you know, let's be honest. You won the 50 fly. I mean, we all thought, I mean, as, as fans, as yeah. reporters, we all thought you're, you're in. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, a, I think, quite a, quite a surprise. Yeah. I mean, 
I know that U.S. swimming, USA swimming is like uh, all about Olympics mm -hmm. and that's their goal. I mean, even by definition, right. but is it the right definition? I mean, you could have won world champs. Yeah, yeah, I could have had a great opportunity. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm grateful for all that I've gained from USA swimming and the teams I've been on for them. I do disagree with the selection and, and that's okay. And I think that's been voiced and been heard. But at the end of the day, I recognize that, you know, the selection procedure is up to them as much as I may disagree. And so it's up to me to be physically capable and prepared on the day to race and make that team under the same standards that every other athlete does. And so that's hard. Um, but I realize like that's not something that I should like. I can't complain about that, you know. Um, so it was it was my fault. And it was on my own shoulders. And so I have to kind of rest with that. And that's easy. I think what was more tough was. I definitely dealt with, so day two of the meet, I had made the team and I would kind of celebrated that and I had posted about it. Um, NBC had posted about it, like congratulations on making the team, all this and that. And then three days later, the meet was kind of coming to a close and um, someone had asked me like, hey, are you like, have you gotten your paper yet to like sign to join the team? I was like, no, like I haven't. And then I started to panic and I was like, oh, oh shoot, I don't think I've actually made the team. And then we looked at the rule books and we read the, the write-up and the fine print and the, uh, what was it, the priority order and how the non-Olympic events are fifth priority behind relay-only athletes. And so that's when I settled in. I was like, oh, dang, like, I only have one more chance and this is 50 free. So if I don't make it now, like, I'm probably not going to go because all of the roster spots have been filled. And that's okay. Like, it's good to race under those pressures and we learned a lot. Did you watch the meet? World champs? I no, actually, I didn't watch any of it. Um, I'm trying to think if there was an event that I followed. I think my parents had watched, and I was like randomly over at their house once, and they were watching like replays or something. And I watched like one event, but I didn't. I don't. I didn't really follow it. Um, Why? I. It's funny because even when I'm there, you're so in, in tune to what you're doing that you don't see much of what goes on apart from your team, and so I think. Part of me was just so I needed to step away and not think about it that I, I was hanging out with my friends. Um, I was, I started dating this girl out in Newport. And so I just like, my focus was elsewhere. And I was so happy to not be thinking about swimming that I could care less about what was happening at World Champs. And I think that was really good for me because, you know, I started to train again at that time and like, I didn't really take any time off, but mentally I took time off. It's like I was away from the sport while just focusing on myself. I mean, mentally is, is a big word in swimming yeah. those days. I mean, yeah. we all saw what happened and heard about her, Caleb Dressel mm -hmm. and Adam Petey yeah. and uh, Christoph Milak. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so it's tough. I think there's, there's two sides of the coin. I will say the mental health in the sport, in the sporting world in general, this is all encompassing. It's everywhere. It's in business as well. As it's important to understand how to deal with it and when to push through and then obviously there comes a time where you need to maybe step back for your own health i think there's a, a time and a place for it and a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it it's not my place to say what that is i think internally um we can all kind of disagree and agree on certain things but i would say like it's really pivotal that athletes start to recognize their values not tied to their success in a sport and that will change a lot and it's hard because, you know, when it comes to signing sponsors or to earning money from your federation or making teams, you know, you have to win to do so. You can't, you're like, losers aren't going to get paid. And it sucks. But I think that's why people look at athletes for inspiration, motivation. It's why kids look up to athletes being like, dang, like, there's something crazy there. And we don't recognize it until you're there. And it's, it's because we're able to handle that pressure and able to stand underneath it and not fold. And so that's kind of, it's tough. Like you look at like the Kobe mentality and the Mamba yeah. mind. It's like, no matter how garbage you feel, you're going to step up and win, whether you believe it or not, like you just got to do it. And so I think it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hope it doesn't get to a point where people pull it out of context and use it as an excuse to quit. Um, but I think it's something that people need to take notice of and, and protect. And a lot of it, starts with your club and the environment that you work under and it's up to the coaches and families and teammates to say hey like 
I'm going to motivate you and push you and it's going to be hard and you're going to feel pressure. But at the end of the day, know that I love you and I care for you outside of what happens. And I think that's where you'll see a shift in like mental health and people being able to perform not out of fear and out of joy and out of love for what they do. Yeah. Um, you talked about sponsors and mm -hmm. I mean, you are from the age of 14, you are yeah. a, a pro, but I think that swing took a hit that place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's hard being a professional Definitely. swimmer these days. It's so tough. So, yeah. so what can we do as a community or what swimming community can do yeah. to make it better? Who it's, I don't know if I, I don't think I have the answers. I think there's a lot of things. I think, um, one journalism's tough. Like I know you're in a position where it's hard cause it's like, we want to write stories that are intriguing and draw people in. But a lot of times those stories tend to not put, it depends how it's written. It's like, there's some, there's some media sites that can be very negatively spun and it gains traction and that's how they make money. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like that destroys people. It destroys mentalities. It destroys, you know, but what I've noticed, especially in the U S is most athletes aren't positioned to earn when they do succeed. And that's because they're not educated prior to succeeding. And so they work so hard, they sacrifice their life, their relationships, their freedoms in order to achieve. And then they achieve and they're like, Oh, awesome. And they just think it's going to flow in. And it doesn't because that doesn't happen like that. Like people need to create brands and image and, and be active in the community or have purpose beyond just the performance. And I think that's where it differs for like a lot of the elite guys. Like you look at Phelps and what he's doing. He's like, yes, he's the greatest of all time. Yeah but he has purpose outside of that now. He's, he's got a voice and a platform and he's using it. If Phelps just disappeared and stopped engaging with his community, he wouldn't make the money that he's making, you know? And so there's work outside of just being an athlete. And I think athletes need to start to realize that. And it's not like, we're not the first sport to realize that. Like the NBA does a really good job of it. NFL does a good job of it. Like hockey, it's about creating these personas and athletes and creating some sort of like, excitement outside of the racing environment because you're not always racing. And then when you come to racing, how do you get people involved and want to come to meets, you know, and like right now swimming is pretty boring. And so how do we make it exciting? You know, and there's, there's opportunity for it. And now it's just getting the people with the right mind and, and the, uh, the energy to do so. Yeah. And then the athletes have to buy in. Well, let's talk about the near future. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you're from here, you're yeah. going to Berlin, Berlin. To, to swim World Cups yep. uh, with a big Everybody. purpose in, <laughs> yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're pretty busy now. So I fly to Berlin tomorrow. I don't know when this comes out, but we'll be racing Berlin, Athens, Budapest for the entire World Cup series. Um, and this is a what bit of the races our, you're going to yeah. focus on. <laughs> um, so right you are now, versatile. We're focusing on a lot. Um, main focus will be... Well, main goal is to make the world champ team in Doha. And so right now my, the open entries kind of look like 50 free, 200 IM, 100 breaststroke. Um, and we choose those three because they're Olympic events. We know there's no questioning that, uh, 50 fly. We want to be quick in it, but that'll be more for world cup points. So it's kind of a twofold. We want to do well in the world cup standings to earn to make up for what's lost in the last year. <laughs> and then we also want to use this as an opportunity to swim fast and position myself to hopefully make selection in November for world champs, which will take place in Doha in February. And um, do you know what's your main focus for the Olympics? What races are you going to want to swim? Kind of. Um, I feel like it changes, um, but it's not going to change a lot in that the three events I know I for sure will be focusing on will be 100 breaststroke, 50 freestyle, 100 butterfly. Oh. Um, the 200 IM is always a wild card, but the issue is on the day that the 2 IM, 50 free, and 100 fly are swum, they're all together. And it really kind of screws up with the programming. And so I feel like I can do two of them and push the 2 IM because it's a very difficult race taxing, um, taxing wise on my body. And so we'll see about that. And then maybe 200 breasts, but that's kind of a very up in the air, depending on how much time we have to get the conditioning ready. Cause that's a race I haven't really swum in a while. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, it was 
maybe the main thing that I would like to see you swim is the 200 yeah. IM. Yeah. And, and, we, and it is. And that's actually is a big goal of ours. I mean, part of our planning was to do really well in World Cups in this 2IM and then swim it in World Champs and swim a time that puts the fear of God into people. <laughs> um, and we'll see if that happens. That's a goal of ours. I will, I will say this, like the 200 IM is not going to be slept on. It's not something I'm going to put away until I do something that I have desired to. And so it'll always be there in the arsenal. But I feel like for the Olympics, it's going to be hard to squeeze it in. But we'll see where the training puts us. Well, I know you met uh, some Israeli coaches mm -hmm. that were here for a lecture from uh, yeah. your father. And um, did, did you did you see did you feel that they are open to like new ideas? And yeah. I mean, you train in a completely different method than Very. most of them. Yeah, I mean, USAPT is famous throughout yeah. the world. I don't know how much is famous yeah. in Israel. I think I think it's known now uh, through through Felix bringing us into Israel, and I think that's awesome. It's exciting. Um, I think you'll see, and this is something we've seen in the U.S., is there first will be an initial questioning and doubting, obviously. And then as it's as one club, you know, the MLS will start to have success with it. I think other people will start to take notice and other clubs will implement hybrids of it. They'll make adjustments to become more race pace and then they'll start to see success their athletes will start to question why we weren't doing this earlier and then they'll do more of it and and we've seen this in the u.s and it's amazing to kind of see this growth and this trajectory and a, a training philosophy and so it just takes one open mind and i think it's i think it'll be good i'm i'm excited i don't know about the paris quad but i believe that it's israel is very capable of creating champion if not multiple champions going into paris it's just up to them on how they implement with the tools they have and i know you guys are brilliant and we know that the tech is brilliant here like there's a lot of brilliant minds that come out of israel and it's there's no questioning why your athletes shouldn't be on the same level and so i'm excited to be involved in it i'm excited to be a part of it however I can be, um, but we know that this will always be a home base, and I think Israel's open to, to learning, growing, and swimming faster. Well, we are very happy that yeah. to have you here, and we hope to see you yeah. here again, maybe For even sure. competing here in, yeah. swim, in a meet. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Whenever there's a meet, I'll be here. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for, being Thanks here. for having me.